And so far we've talked about alkenes and alkyne reductions using hydrogenation. But it's also possible to reduce other groups with hydrogenation. So let's examine that quickly. Aldehydes are fairly reactive. And under these conditions, they will be reduced to alcohols, primary alcohols. So we have hydrogen. And in this case, just one bar or around one atmosphere of pressure and at room temperature. So very mild conditions, and this will be reduced to the primary alcohol. Next, let's look at the ketone, which is similar to the aldehyde, but less reactive. So here's a ketone, and in this case, it is possible to reduce using hydrogenation. In this case, however, we need to increase the pressure for the reaction to occur. So we're going up three times the pressure to three bar. This is still not very high pressure, but it's getting higher. We'll use a rhodium catalyst and we must increase the temperature. And in this case, we'll make a secondary alcohol. And there's the um, methyl group that we had right here. Now let's look at a nitrile. That's another thing that we've looked at redu reducing before. Let's see if we can catalytically hydrogenate it. Now, nitriles are less reactive than these, and so we'll need even higher pressures and temperatures. And we can use rainy nickel. And we need 80 degrees now. So it's getting even harder. But we have reduced the nitrile into a primary amine. And how about amides? So here we have a primary amide, and these are quite difficult to reduce. And we're going to need 200 bars of pressure, which is getting a lot higher. Now, it's possible to do that. We just need a steel container and we're gonna have to go much higher in temperature. And furthermore, the yields are going to be poor. And I'll talk about why in just one second. Now, one of the major problems behind reductions of nitriles in amides using catalytic hydrogenation is that these amines tend to poison our catalyst, which will further reduce the reactivity and decrease our yields. And so these reactions are best reduced or best conducted using lithium aluminum hydride which will reduce these. So, now you may ask, why would we prefer to use hydrogenation rather than lithium aluminum hydride for the ketones and aldehydes? Because that will also reduce them. Well, in these two reactions above, you'll notice that the atom economy is 100%. Every atom in this 
and the hydrogen ends up in the product. So this is a very green reaction. You'll notice that there's going to be very little side products. We don't have any lithium, aluminum, hydride um, side atoms that are just ending up not being used. Every single atom ends up in the product. That is very efficient, and not many reactions can claim that kind of economy. So, that is one reason to use catalytic hydrogenation. This particular process is often favored by industry because they can have very large reaction chambers with large meshes of platinum or the, the other metals that they would wish to conduct the reaction with, and then they only need hydrogen gas to be pumped in. Then the product can be made very cleanly, and at the end of the reaction, very little needs to be done because these types of reactions can actually be run neat, which is they do not require solvent in some cases. That is a further advantage, especially when you're conducting these reactions at a very large scale. So while we may need to prefer lithium aluminum hydride in some cases, because these conditions are very um, difficult to achieve and also produce poor yields, in other cases, we may prefer the hydrogenation especially when producing a lot of products.